I've been asked many times in the past which Paramill toolpaths allows the use of machining of undercuts. So I've put together a project which contains uh, pretty much all of the toolpaths which can natively cut undercut regions. There you can see the label for each part. We've got constant Z finishing, embedded pattern machining, flow line machining, parametric spiral, profile, surface machining, projection surface machining, projection line, projection point and projection curve machining, rotary machining, which doesn't require a, a five axis license, swarf machining as well as uh, the swarf wireframe of course, and the, the two cost option modules, port machining and the BBI module. Let's just take a look at some of these in a little more detail. Firstly, we're going to look at uh, constant Z with undercut. So if I just uh, display this particular part on its own, and I'll switch off the strategy types and zoom in. So here we've got a constant Z toolpath with undercut switched on. So if I just take a look at the settings on this, there's the tick box within constant Z which allows us to switch on undercut which is just here where my cursor is on the right hand side however this toolpath does not look great it is machining the undercuts up to a certain level but of course my machine depending upon the type of machine can only machine undercuts to a certain uh, amount so within my tool axis settings I've got tool axis limit switched on and I've allowed a maximum tilt in this case of 22 degrees so the elevation ranges from 68 to 90 which is 22 degrees from vertical so when we create the constant Z toolpath it machines up to this undercut and then retracts so we have an awful lot of retracts on this toolpath which is not uh, ideal really. Um, so what I've done is to create another constant Z toolpath but this time we have much fewer retracts and I've been able to do this by adding some parameters which are not on the user interface and these are detailed exactly how I did this within the notes of the toolpath so if we open up that toolpath form and go to notes you will see an explanation here of the parameters I have used so to switch on the maximum undercut detection I use this parameter and I would simply copy that and paste it into the command window and then I have a second command to define the maximum undercut angle that we are going to try to machine. So I'm going to uh, go up to a maximum of 16 degrees from the vertical. So what you can see Paramil do here is when it reaches the maximum undercut it will not try to go any further it will simply stay at the 16 degrees and cut down to the base dramatically reducing the number of retractions on the toolpath. So it's quite a useful tip there for using constant Z. So without this typed parameter, with the typed parameter, we will get excessive machining but much fewer retracts on the part. Okay, let's have a look at some of the other strategies. Moving on to the flow line. Let me just switch that on and the other uh, part on and move to the flow line toolpath. Sorry, I'm on the embedded pattern. Uh, let me go to the embedded pattern toolpath. Okay, with embedded pattern, in this particular instance, I've created some text as a pattern. And I actually projected this onto the part in power shape. Okay, so this creates a pattern text and because I did not create this from surface edges what I must do is use the edit embed function. Okay, so edit embed. So this will embed it into 
the selected surfaces. So prior to using the edit embed command I simply selected the one surface then PowerMill will only try to embed the pattern onto that particular surface. Now the beauty of embedded pattern is that it allows us to machine perpendicular or normal to the surface. If I just switch the tool on for this and uh, let's just simulate from the start and press play and there you can see it can machine normal to the surface but it can also work with undercut regions if I attach over here somewhere okay if the tool was vertical it would hit that lip on the top but because we've tilted it over we have no such problem That's a difference, really, uh, the major difference between embedded pattern machining and normal pattern machining. Embedded pattern machining allows us to machine normal to the surface. If we move on to flow line finishing, let me just activate the correct toolpath, and I will also display the flow line level. So I'll just switch that to solo, switch that pattern off and zoom in. What I've got here is a male rib type shape and if we analyze that a bit more closely we can see we've got areas of undercut over here. But This is no real problem for flow line machining. What I need to do for flow line again is to create an embedded pattern. It will not work with the normal pattern, it must be embedded. But for flow line machining this is easier really because I don't need to embed the pattern itself. All I would do is select the surfaces required. So if I select all of the surfaces for that uh, particular rib, then if I create a pattern and within the pattern all I will do is use insert model. Now that by default gives me an embedded pattern. We can trash these areas that we don't want. Just select them and press delete. But the embedded pattern toolpath works with four separate curves and this happens to be one curve. So what we would always do is go into the curve editor. We're not going to make any edits which would stop it from being embedded. All we're going to do is to cut it in the curve editor which leaves the curve embedded no problem so cut it over here to seek out this other corner we'll cut it here seek out the other corners here and select this curve cut it here switch off the cutting and you'll notice that over here there's two separate curves so I'm going to select them both and merge so that merges that curve from 2 to 1 and the main curve from 5 to 4 and we must always have a minimum of 4 curves for flow line machining and that is the typical way of preparing your curve so if we go to the flow line finishing toolpath it uses this curve it successfully machines the undercut region if I just attach the tool over here in this case I'm using a tool axis from a curve and I've sketched this white curve here so the tool axis is always going to go through that curve and successfully machine the undercut. Okay so switch that one off, switch that pattern off and let's have a look at the next interesting toolpath. This time parametric spiral now I'm going to switch those layers off and switch the parametric spiral layers back on. Now I've decided to choose the same feature just to show you that we could use parametric spiral or flow line for this. With parametric spiral we don't need to use an embedded pattern but we still need a pattern which is a rough sketch of the center line. So if I just take a look at this, I've created this 2D curve which is when looking down Z 
is the approximate center line of that rib. Doesn't need to be exact. Okay. Now, if I take a look at the toolpath, settings, you'll see that I've selected that particular curve. and I've defined the outer limit, we've seen this in the previous example, of the surfaces which are adjacent to the actual rib shape. And this allows me to create a, uh, a toolpath which goes in a continuous spiral around that rib. Now one of the important things, because I have undercut on here, again if I switch the undercut shading back on again, I've got some undercut here. So I, what I must do within the strategy form is to define the maximum amount of undercut I want to machine. So because I've got a curve, I've got to the left of the curve, which is on this side where my cursor is, there's no undercut on that side, so I've left it at zero but I'm allowing a maximum five degree tilt on the other side. Try to define this angle just a little bit more than the actual maximum undercut. So in this case my maximum undercut was less than five so I've just made it a little bit more to allow a five degree tilt. And there was no need at all to define any curves to define the tool axis. Similarly, on the same part, we've got a feature over here with undercut. There's undercut all down one side. Now, in this instance, I don't use a curve. I just use a point, which is really quite difficult to see. It's a single point in a pattern in the approximate center of the boss. Now, because I use a point you'll see that the form changes. It doesn't give me a left angle and a right angle. It simply gives me one single maximum undercut parameter. And I've used a maximum undercut of 11 degrees because the maximum undercut here is 10. So again, I just make this value a little bit more than the true maximum undercut. And then if we take a look at the tool on there, we'll see that it's tilted in this case by 11 degrees. Successfully cutting the undercut region. There are many other toolpaths in here which you can look at uh, during your own time. Just a quick example, a swarf toolpath. Let me just switch these layers off and I'll switch the swarf toolpaths on. So what we're doing here is cutting this swarf wall uh, using the side of the tool, in this case a tapered tool, mul multiple cuts, just machining all the way down that wall. And again, successfully taking out any undercut regions. Thank you.